Canada is currently facing a land governance crisis that's playing out on both ecological and social landscapes. What happens when two systems of law and governance come head to head on land and about land? Is land back a point of entry for difficult conversations and for moving towards action? It's crystal clear the current paradigm of progress and development is a total failure, an illusion of wealth and prosperity created by the degradation and loss of the life support systems of the planet. I think we're in, a, in actually sort of a crisis moment. You know, the planet seems to have reached pretty close to a tipping point in terms of its ability to sustain not us as animals, but our activities that we've chosen to engage in, right? It's not that the Earth can't sustain all of humanity, it's that the Earth can't sustain what humans are doing. You know, Canada finds itself in this situation where they're having to constantly uh, deal with these issues, uh, where First Nations peoples are actually exercising their, their rights to occupy their own, own lands. The relationship of domination between the Crown and First Nations is based on the uh, asymmetrical power. So right now the people making the rules about environmental protections, about sustainable development, about resource extraction are the same governments that uh, stand to benefit financially and are the same ones making these decisions about how the land should be governed. So there's a fundamental conflict of interest there. The reason why we're not sitting at the tables making these decisions is because they're not our tables. We see you know, the, the precarity of the relationship between Indigenous people in Canada and uh, settlers. And I think we see it um, with, you know, the assumption that Indigenous interests are subservient to non-Indigenous commercial interests. The challenge, and we can see it in, um, you know, in, in the images of, you know, land defenders coming up against, um, you know, the state police, and both are lawful. Both are employing their own systems of law, and what you have is two legitimate legal authorities that are saying two different things. I think that this is a very, very extreme power struggle, and that's what we're seeing. The reason why Indigenous people are being invaded by the RCMP with paramilitary rifles and artillery is because the perfection of Crown sovereignty is fundamental to the legitimacy of this country. And the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada actually talked about reconciliation requiring real societal change. And I think that the relationship to land is foundational to that. For me, land back means about us regaining um, our own sovereignty over this place, which means that we would have a say really in the, the way this country operates, period. Land back to me isn't actually about physically, like my neighbor's house returning to, it, because the reality is no human owns land. Even if I have a deed on where you and I are sitting right now, I don't, I don't own, like, who, what joke is that? I don't own it. I barely own the physical structure. I think it's really about the decision-making power it's about self-determination for our peoples here. That should include some access to the territories and resources in a more equitable fashion. And for us to have control over how that actually looks. So if we don't want to log it, we don't. When I think about land back, I think like people back. You know, I think that, that really it's, it's people returning back and finding their place in those systems of life. And I truly believe that land back is so much more than taking land back. Indigenous people are fighting for their land because it embodies their culture, their history, their very reasons for being on earth. Land back, okay. Well, it's ultimately about my body taking back my body, take, putting my body on the land, feeling comfortable in my body as a person on the land, 
being on the land and the connection to the land. You know, that's that's what land back means to me. Having my my children roaming free in spaces where my ancestors roam free. Land back means recognizing our authority to decide about what happens within our territory, to be at the table and making those decisions, to have the ability to say no equal to the ability to say yes. Land back to me literally means giving back Indigenous peoples their lands that were dispossessed from them through a variety of forms of dispossession. But it also means that when Indigenous people assert their rights and exercise their jurisdiction, that we honour and live in relation to those laws rather than in relation to settler laws. Land back means future. For us as, as Indigenous people, we've always, that's been our responsibility is to look after the land. And the, but it's also that deeper spiritual relationship for the future, that there's, there's actually something here for us. We need to act on it. We need to act on our laws, and that's what the land defenders are doing today, is acting on, on our laws. That's been their responsibility as, as defenders of the land. It essentially means honoring the treaties and honoring the agreements uh, and um, uh, restoring uh, justice to Indigenous peoples. And I don't really see any way of, uh, of doing it without finding ways to return land. I believe that we don't govern the land, that the land governs us. So we have to listen to what the land is telling us. We have to listen to the, the spirit of this land because they're telling us how to live here, how to govern ourselves accordingly. We're standing in solidarity ultimately with what we're all walking on. And if, and if we can't understand at this point in human history that that's who we most have to stand in solidarity with, because she stands in solidarity with us every single moment of every single day, then we're in deep shit. We're at the very front end, I believe, of this truth and reconciliation process, right? And I think that begins with education around issues of sustainability and so forth. At some point down the road, and hopefully sooner rather than later, we've got to talk about land use. Uh, we've got to talk about how munici municipalities, provinces, uh, and even the federal government, they share responsibilities with First Nations to uh, find new ways of preserving the land and preserving biodiversity. If the culture doesn't shift in the mainstream, you're not going to see any, any results. When it comes to the major issues of preserving the, uh, the planet for future generations, everybody's got to do better. If people are for trying to change things better for the earth, whether they're a lawyer, a doctor, a scientist, a traditionalist, a land defender, you support them all because it's going to take all of them to change. And so even though a lot of these movements might be Indigenous-led, it needs everybody to be a part of it. We're not doing these things because it's like, it's something that we want and we want to like prove our point. It's the fact that we can feel it in our bodies and like we're connected to Mother Earth. You know, it's, it's not easy to be labeled as a criminal for doing what I'm supposed to do in my, in my role and responsibility as a woman. Canada has only ever listened to us when we blockade and when we protest. How we're gonna win is by people working together and actually getting on the land and building sustainable economies with their bare hands. People who know the facts and know the, have the information at their disposal and have the ethics, uh, they need to speak out. When people talk about colonization, there's automatically a pain is automatically something uncomfortable because it, it is uncomfortable. But climate change is uncomfortable. Seeing the, the water poisoned is uncomfortable. I think Canadians need to understand when they feel defensive about the land back movement that 
they're starting within a completely different starting point than Indigenous people are who have been the subject of decades and decades of systemic impoverishment, legislation, policy, and military means in order to um, break down political organizations, governance systems, cultural systems, social orders, and so on. And so people really need to educate themselves on the kinds of state violence that our country has participated in and to see themselves not through a lens of guilt, but through a lens of responsibility. We're resting on shaky foundations in Canada. I think that the way we have structured uh, the colonial state doesn't recognize the space that Indigenous people should have. The idea of land back is that it's so fragile to assume that property can be maintained within the current colonial order and that Indigenous people don't have a better claim to land. And if I was in that precarious position, I sure would want to negotiate something to be able to figure out a peaceful coexistence. Generally, people don't want to assume that they're, they're complicit in systems that do harm, right? A lot of these systems we wake up, we're born into. I think people generally don't want to think that they are acting poorly, especially when it's, you know, not conscious. You know, uh, they don't want to think that their ancestors behaved poorly or did things that would not jive with their morality today. Uh, they don't want to think that the truth about the country. But we know that nations always build a mythology about themselves, that mythology always misrepresents its true history in order to make it more palatable for the, the present and the future. That's all good though, right? Because we, us being here is evidence that you can continue on. None of this is easy. This is going to be incredibly hard but so was building whatever this is.